and welcome back to the Good Morning Artesia Radio Show. We are back with you on this fine Tuesday morning. And Dr. Joe Salgado is with us here. Why don't you grab that microphone there? And okay. and uh, good morning good to morning you. Good morning to you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm so glad you came in. <laughs> me too. Normally, I go to your office. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Usually, it's the opposite. <laughs> How's everything going? You know, we're we're doing uh, we're doing really well. Uh, we're having fun. Um, complaining about these uh, NMAA guidelines, but that's another topic for another that's, day. That's, a, that's out of my realm. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's talk about the vaccine because okay. uh, that, that's why we wanted to have you come in today. Sounds good. And uh, talking to David, Artesia General, was very fortunate to be provided with a pretty good number of, of doses for the next few weeks. Yeah, it, it was it was actually uh, somewhat of a surprise, and it came to us about two weeks ago, and we kind of had to make a decision whether or not we were going to accept them or not within a matter of a few minutes, and luckily <laughs> we kind of took a leap of faith and took them, and, and uh, last week, you know, after a little bit of some troubleshooting, you know, we were fortunate to kind of get that first week under our belt, and we continue to vaccinate this week as well. So that, that is uh, that's fantastic. And I know initially people were signing up to receive the vaccine through the hospital. Right. But as part of this process, you kind of had to turn that off and, and everybody has to go through the state's uh, sign up. Right. And so for us to have a little bit of access to the scheduling, what we, you know, encouraged everybody to do was to kind of, you know, change course kind of register with the Department of Health because they give you a confirmation number. And once you get that confirmation number, then they also give you a confirmation site. And the way that works is we kind of open up, you know, spots for individuals to kind of be put into. And so the Department of Health kind of in the background is one that kind of pushes people into these uh, positions. And I hate to use that word push, but basically they say, hey, listen, you've been scheduled you know, at Artesia General and, you know, at such and such time. And so, and that's how it's worked. Now, what we've done with some of the people that are on the list from the hospital, we've also been accommodating them kind of through usual means to try to clean that list up. Mm -hmm. I think when when we first started, I think the, li the list at Artesia General, we had, you know, over 1,200 individuals. And then, but as far as the Department of Health numbers, the county had about 56, 5,700 that were interested in the vaccine. And so, and that's where that's coming from. And so um, uh, we had a big contingency of Carlsbad uh, patients um, last week. And so it was good to see those guys, you know, kind of driving over and, you know, they kind of battled the cold and, you know, it was nice. So we saw them come in and they were, they were appreciative and it was, it was good to see them. And um, we still have, you know, our, work to do with Artesia and kind of get our guys uh, going. And so I encourage anybody who's interested to kind of reach out uh, because we'd be happy to assist you. The important thing right now is just if you want it is to go ahead and, you know, get scheduled through that Department of Health. And if you have a confirmation number, we can assist you, you know, especially if the appointment times that they give you do not work out. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's interesting to see because early on it seemed like this part of the state was not getting vaccinated right. at the same rate as other right. parts of the state and it was uncertain whether it was because of the availability of the vaccines or whether there was just interest in in signing up uh I don't know and then last week uh was it on wednesday uh the state daily report comes out and all of a sudden we had a hundred new cases <laughs> in in, right. uh, in eddie right. county yeah, and right. 67 here in artesia right. and that had people uh all right. freaked out too yeah to, to speak to the to the um, you know the vaccine what we have is you know there was a little bit of a delay in getting some of that vaccine you know early on and then um, I would like to see the interest in the vaccine you know in Artesia improve we still have a lot of individuals that aren't interested in it and so that plays a part in it and what it does and I think what a lot of <clears throat> people don't understand is if we show no interest in the vaccine then we tend to kind of, you know, if we're not filling our schedule, then they start to look at it and say, okay, hey, we're going to, you know, move the allotment and, you know, hey, give it to a community that, you know, needs it as well. And so even though we need it, 
we also have that component of people aren't interested in it and so and that's kind of what we're seeing a little bit of this week because the the volume is a little bit down compared to last week mm -hmm. and so um, we'd like to see that kind of increase but now we're I think in groups 1a and 1b mm -hmm. right uh, have they have you been following to see if they have any kind of a timetable as when the next uh, level will open up? Because I think aren't teachers in the next in the next level, and that's been one of the widely discussed items. Right. Is, uh, you know, do you move teachers up or do you you know start including the teachers? Uh, you know, what do we what do we want to do for the teachers? You right. Know? And and so unfortunately, you know, and and one thing I'm in I'm in disagreement with with regards to the state is, you know, they have these you know groups that they're kind of vaccinating first and i and i and i totally get it you know the problem is is that it's kind of we wait till we have a tendency to kind of sit and wait till everybody kind of catches up whereas i think it's probably more important in a community like carlsbad or tija you know some of the smaller communities you know here in, in new mexico that basically <clears throat> you know let's just line them up and let's get them vaccinated you know because it's easier for us here in artesia to go and vaccinate you know, six to seven thousand members of the community that that want you know, it, that, that want it, mm -hmm. than it is to kind of wait. You know, and vaccinate that first fifteen hundred, two thousand. Wait, let everybody else catch up, and then go with it. And so, yeah. Um, and I think that's where we're at now. We're kind of waiting to see what the rest of the state does. <clears throat> Excuse me. And hopefully, they'll open it up for you know everybody who you know needs it. Right, the now, teachers especially. Yeah, uh, well, I, you know, if they want it, they should be able right, to get exactly. it. And, Absolutely, and, and that's Absolutely. certainly a group that's interacting with other people in the community on a more frequent basis. If I was over forty and I was teaching, I would definitely want it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which version of the vaccine is uh, the hospital receiving? Is it the Pfizer, the Moderna, or or do, or do you not know until the box shows up? No. So currently. Um, we're, we, we've actually, since the uh, the beginning, we've been getting Pfizer. And mm -hmm. so, um, and that's what we currently have, you know, in stock right now. And so, um, you probably read that Johnson & Johnson got approved. And so, there was a, a call yesterday, and they're waiting to see how they're going to kind of allocate that. And so, I know there's probably a lot more individuals that are looking for getting this just one shot deal and kind of moving on and so we're we're kind of excited to see when you know we might be able to get our hands on some of that so currently what we're getting now is we're getting pfizer and we're getting it sh you know uh shipped directly to us and so the infamous pizza box is pizza box is what we're getting and so um the good thing is is be even though we don't have one of the ultra low freezers they're allowing now us to store it at about minus five and so we get a little bit longer uh life out of it so the, rather than five days we get two weeks and so it's mm. kind of been nice and so that's really changed the game for us yeah because when you get it and you have to be done in five minutes then or five days excuse me yeah it, it puts a little pressure on you it, it does I was, that's what i was going to ask you do you have one of those mega super cold freezers well, it'll be interesting to see because we're supposed to be getting uh one at the end of the month but like everything else in America, you know, supply chain and delays. And so we'll see if it, if it happens. And so I think it's uh, supposed to come through either the state or I think even the county uh, is assisting in some way. So, yeah. um, and with the intent that, hey, we'll continue to kind of do what we're doing with the vaccine and kind of be somewhat of a little bit of a hub for the county. So when, when you talk to folks or you hear conversations about the vaccine, what seems to be the, you know, the top, two or three concerns that people have expressed to you or that you've seen that people have expressed that may cause them to hesitate uh, getting the vaccine? I, th I think the, the biggest one is definitely the, uh, you know, the time frame on how it was brought on, you know, the fact that it was brought on, you know, quickly within a year. Mm -hmm. um, the technology is very solid. Um, other vaccines have been kind of developed this way. Um, and the <clears throat> the issue is is that I think as much and, and this might play to some of the you know even though I don't want to get political in it, no no and that, I'm not and, and, no is that is that um, I mean, they if you actually, want to but they, <laughs> they, what they did is they actually kind of if you look at some of the <laughs> history behind it the it was basically private sector guys that did this and so that was a reason they were able to be efficient and so it didn't kind of go through 
you know, the government in a sense. And so these guys are the ones that developed it. And so it moved quickly, but everybody was, everybody expresses concern about, you know, what they read, you know, the time with what it was brought on, the technology, you know, with the mRNA. And so that's really the biggest, you know, side effect profile. Everybody's, you know, understands kind of, hey, if you get a shot, there's a chance that you're just kind of not going to feel well after a while. But that's really been the biggest one. And, you know, and, and a lot of the stuff is, misinformation that people read or get or you know yeah you'd be surprised how many loved ones are telling their other loved ones hey don't get it you know so yeah. um and i think that's the biggest one um one one that i hear from time to time this is going to rewrite your dna right right this is not rewriting dna no absolutely not yeah and what it is is basically um to kind of you know define kind of how it works is they utilize the injection and it's in a, the mRNA, which is the messenger in RNA, is in a little vector. And what it does is it gets incorporated into your cells. And what it does is you replicate just that little segment, you know, that causes this immune response. And so, and that's what, that's all it is. It's not, it's, there's nothing else other than that. And, and there have been other vaccinations that mm -hmm. have used this technique Absolutely. it's okay. a fairly new technique i mean it's right. not like 100 years yeah. old or 50 years old but yeah. it, but this isn't the the first time that this technique has been used for something that probably has been widely distributed yeah and if i'm not mistaken i think uh some of the uh, ebola virus uh, vaccines were developed this way and yeah so. So, so part of what i've read is that you know they'd have these different uh types of vaccines that they were working on uh -huh. and they would actually start the manufacturing process right uh and then there's different levels of testing that goes on and instead of waiting for the first level to finish to start the second level they were all kind of done on the same track yeah and it's done as a continuum and and if you were to look at you know read some of the literature as well currently what they're doing now is they're actually you know vaccinating you know children you know 16 and younger you know there's arms what they call arms of these studies where they've got probably, hey, age 12 to 16 being vaccinated. And at some point it'll be, you know, nine to 12 and then from, you know, six to nine. And, and they start moving those as a continuum and then they can kind of roll it out. And that's kind of probably the reason they're kind of been talking about, okay, hey, we figure high school age children, you know, probably will be vaccinating most of those guys by the fall and then the younger ones, you know, in the next, uh, uh, by the end of the year. Because right now it's 16 up is the... 16 is the up, nature. especially if you've got, you know, uh, some type of uh, medical condition, asthma, you know. Right. Can you stick around for a few Absolutely. minutes? Absolutely. All right. We're going to break for the news. Dr. Joe Salgado from Artesia General Hospital is with us. Talk